Hello, everybody. We are from Milwaukee to Nashville, but we're not talking Milwaukee or Nashville, kind of. We're back with more news. Two things. One, Calgary is staying at the Saddle Dome. Um, they had been back and forth on new arena, new arena, new arena, and the ownership for Calgary basically went, why would I spend what I could sell the team on in a new arena? Yeah. I mean, it's going to cost them um, a half a billion dollars to build a new arena and complex that the, that Cal the city of Calgary wants. No, and 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 they can't update the saddle dome because it's a historic landmark. There's only so much you could do, right? Um, so for them, I think it's either stay put or sell a team. Uh, so that's those are their or move. So those are their options. The owner moves the team, which is a right. possibility as well. The owner could put in uh, in front of the league um, as soon as. Uh, the contract with the Saddle Dome is up, which is in two years. Um, Arizona will be playing in a, at the Arizona State University for the next four years as they try to get a deal done to keep the team there. I would like to think that after a year of them being there and if nothing is done, um, I don't see it working. All right. Uh, beyond that. So if they can't get a deal done on a new arena by that time and find a place for it in Tempe where they want it, which Tempe yeah. is more than willing if the owner's got the money. That's the question mark, though. Does the right. owner have the money? I don't know enough about it. Um, you know, and, and uh, as you can see, telephone, so I'm not sitting here. Uh, uh, th you think I'm actually uh, doing nothing? It's literally uh, looking up uh, what the latest news is on that. So All right. Coyote's owner, Alex Muro, submitted a $1.7 billion entertainment complex to the City Tempe Council in, 20, in September of 2021, but it hasn't been voted on yet. Um, I would like to think that you would want that voted on as quickly as possible. Uh, the Coyotes are going to have to put into the Areta project uh, or the new building that they're going into a $19.7 million to make it uh, NHL ready. Now that's funny. Gary Bettman kind of trolled the Coyotes in his statement about it. He said it would be advantageous for the, uh. for the Coyotes to play in front of us in a smaller building because it'll make them look like they have a bigger fan base. Yeah. Oh.
Um, another news also announced uh, that the Boston Bruins will be getting the uh, Winter Classic next year at Fenway. Yeah. And Carolina will be having a stadium series game. So we'll see who's playing in those uh, when the schedule gets released. I don't think they announced opponents. By recollection. I don't think so. I mean, Boston, I would probably see Pittsburgh. That's what I would think. Yeah. Or Montreal. Those would be the two I would I would really be in on. Um, so those are some updates on our last one. Um, also, Marchand can officially appeal as of today his suspension as he served one game of a six suspension. So um, I don't see him winning the appeal, but they could probably knock it down to four. Right. Not that I'd want that for the league, but that's where we're at. All righty. So here we go. It's trade center time, which means the trade deadline is upon us. There's some pretty big names in here, too. Yeah. A lot of them, uh, next year's uh, restricted free agent, uh, next year's free agency looks to be stacked. Um, so we're going we're gonna to go off of this off the jump. Marc-Andre Fleury. Do you see him moving? Um, I'd like to see him move. In reality, do I think it happens? No. Well, the cap hit. I think the cap hit hinders him. Yeah. The Seven million dollar cap hit. Now he is the UFA at the end of the year, so there is a chance that Chicago might be willing to eat some of it. Right. If the other team's willing to go, hey, well, we'll give you a first, a third, and then a third next, or and a second next year. You know, if right. you eat some of this, I, I, I could see Chicago maybe sniffing, sniffing at that to get their rebuild going. Right. Um, uh, another, another <laughs> kicker, Arizona's cap space. Arizona. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go and float my way over to Cap Friendly here um, and, and check out the Coyotes' Cap situation because the two – yeah, Arizona has $17 million in cap space. Buffalo has $34 million in cap space. Yeah. Ducks have – 28 million in cap space. The Red Wings have 27. The Preds have 27 in cap space. Right now. Yeah, the Preds have 27 million in cap space, uh, in current cap space. Yeah. The projected cap space. Uh, or the projected cap space is around 10 million. Uh, Arizona has at the current moment 6 million. Buffalo has 13. Um, if I were to say that looking at teams with the cap space that they have, okay, yeah. and out of the teams I could see Flurry going to, the yeah, Buffalo's probably it. If you're not eating anything, but Buffalo is in no position to be making a trade like that at this point. Right. The Ducks, I believe, are the only team at this point in a position to make that. I'm going to – should have had all this stuff up before I did it, but I'm sorry, folks. I make mistakes, too. I remember. The Ducks are in fourth place. Um. So, that being said, Ducks are in fourth place. I could see them going for somebody like Flurry, But, in their case, I could see them going for somebody more like John Klingberg. 
They don't really need goaltending. They have a goaltender who costs them a lot of money. <laughs> they don't need two. Um, the other thing I could see happening, and just to see it happen would be, as much as I would hate it, would be bittersweet is Mark andre Fleury going back to the Penguins. Yeah. Um, that is a, a, a thing I could see happening. Um, another thing I could see happening um, with Montreal way over the cap. And uh, the Blackhawks way over the cap. And Pittsburgh over the cap. Carolina over the cap. Literally, there is not a lot of teams under the cap. So right. tra trading actually right now may be hard. Vegas is going to be the one team who does nothing. Yeah. And there's a reason for that. Because right now, sitting on their long-term IR is Jack Eichel and Alec Martinez. Alec Martinez has a full no-movement clause, or a modified no-movement clause. Martinez has not played this year. Their injured reserve, there's nothing on it. Their cap space, there is none. They're $10 million over the cap. Yeah. And right now, they have no relief room either. Yeah. And with Ico about to be healthy. That'll end that. Um, as it also sits, um, so let's look at a little more like cap friendly kind of contracts. Phil Kessel, Arizona. I could see him on the move. Yeah. To where? No clue. Um, Tomas Hurdle. I could see him on the move for San Jose, where San Jose sits in the standings at. Twenty-two, twenty, and four with a three-game losing streak. That West is stacked. And the Flames are on fire right now. Um for that, I I, I don't really see where people could end up. Um, the one interesting, like, I guess we could say trade situation will be, uh, Jacob Chikrin. Yeah. Because he's still got three years on a $4.6 million deal at 23 years old. Yeah. Um, the other one is to see where Claude Giroux lands. Because we know he's going to be on the move. Yeah. Um, ben Sherratt has, well, let's take a look here. Ben Sherratt has a 3.5, and it's the end of his contract. I can see a team maybe sneezing at him for defensive. Um, Ability, uh, Tomas Hurdle has 38 points. Giroux has 36. 
Kessel has 31. Uh, Andrew Cope has 28. And Debraska has 15. He's still young. Um, I would really like to see Hudobin on the move. Yeah. Just because I think he deserves better than sitting in the AHL. Right. Which is what he's doing. He didn't even dress today. They didn't even dress him. He has one year left of a $3.33 million deal. I wouldn't be surprised to see that kind of air itself out. Um, Kelly Yarncroft. As much as a Preds fan, I'd love to see him back in a Preds jersey. Um, he's just not having that good of a year. And and I don't see us wanting to pay a lot for him. All right. Um, if, if it were, I'd want somebody in the top 10, which including uh, excluding cap space to Arizona. Um, Phil Kessel is probably one of the few that I would I'd probably take a look at. If, if I'm a Preds fan, it's Kessel, it's uh, Chikrin. Um, I mean, you add Jacob Chikrin to this team, uh, another power play kind of guy who's just like Roman Yossi, and you got Ekholm already. I mean, you may have to give up Fabro and some other pieces for the future if that's what you're looking to do. But it all depends on what you're looking to do. Do you want to be competitive long term, or do you want to be? Or is this just a this year run type thing? Right. Playing it safe, going with what we got, not really diving deep into it. Because personally, me, it's guys like Kessel, who have the cup experience. It's guys like Flurry, who has cup experience. Sharat, cup experience from last year. Giroux has cup experience. You know, Hurdle has cup experience with San Jose. There's guys out here who have playoff cup experience. Right. That, also Jeff Petrie, another one of those guys with cup experience. You know, um, I, I just see that. And then I'd, I'd look at also, like, looking at, like, just where teams are. You know, I'd see the Ducks being ones to go more for it and and and, and be in that. Uh, the Blues, the Wilds, those teams I could see diving. The Preds I could see diving. Um, Air, Colorado, I see them staying put with what they got. Um, as much as, as, as a second center is a necessity for them right now, um, I don't think they got the cap space. Nope. They have 90,000 in cap space open. So, um, as well as like Florida, Colorado, Toronto, St. Louis, Carolina, Pittsburgh has no cap space. Uh, Dallas has no cap space. Um, Philadelphia has none. Washington has none. Chicago has none, Vancouver, Edmonton, Tampa Bay, Winnipeg, uh, Tampa Bay, Winnipeg, Montreal, and the Canadian uh, and uh, Veg Veg bleh, Vegas have no cap space. Um, one of the things interesting to me is Montreal traded away their first round pick to the Arizona Coyotes. Huh. So um, the Arizona Coyotes traded with Montreal for Christian Dvorak. Um, last year. Um, <laughs> right now, uh, this is a conditional pick. And the condition is the better of uh, Montreal's and Carolina's pick in 2021. But 
here's a kicker in this. Um, if Montreal picks in the top 10, then it becomes the worst of the Montreal Carolina trade, which right now Montreal is projected to pick 30th. Um, as well as Buffalo has three first round picks in this next draft. Starting after the trade deadline, me and John will be doing these kinds of videos with the draft instead. Um, Um, the other part of this is um, when you're really looking at it. Yeah. Giroux is chasing a cup. Yeah, he is. At 34 years old, he's, he's really just chasing a cup at this point. Mm -hmm. Um, so these are the RFAs, uh, Jacob or Jake DeBrusque, um, young talent. It just seems that um, the Boston coach just doesn't care for him and doesn't play him to his strengths. Um, Vitalik uh, Kravitsov, um, he is currently playing in the KHL because he refused to report to the Rangers after the whole Tony D'Angelo punching him in the face thing. Which I can't blame him. Um, so he is on the trade block at 21. Um, there are four players who have time uh, or terms remaining on their contract. Uh, Jacob Chikrin with 3.4 against his cap hit. Uh, JT Miller with 5.2. Um, uh, Jeff Petrie with 6.25 and Anton Hudobin with a 3.33. Beyond that, there's really not much there. In all retrospect here, if I'm being honest as a Preds fan, I would take a sneeze at Mark Stahl, Callie Arncroft, uh, Johan Larson and uh, Phil Kessel, just because they're low and it's the end of their contracts. They've got something to prove that they're better than what their team is performing. All right. These guys have something to prove. <sighs> they're better than their team's performing. Um. Kessel's going to have no shortage of calls. Uh, Miller's going to have no shortage of calls. Uh, Max Domi, I wouldn't be surprised if the Preds took a look at that. Um, uh, 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 from a fan perspective, he fits the Preds' play style. Same thing with Claude Giroux. The Preds like to pass, set up, shoot, and hit. Yeah. They play a complete game all around. They play old school hockey. Not very often seen these days, but it is old school hockey. I don't know if you have anything you want to say on that part, but those would be the guys I think they would be looking at. Yeah, I do too. Because I don't think you want to be looking at guys who don't fit your system. Right. Yeah. You know, um, I mean, obviously getting a guy like Kessel who can snipe, um, with us not exactly scoring well five on five um, would be helpful. Right. But I don't think he fits the system. So I, that's why I'd look at a guy like more like Claude Giroux and say, hey, uh, you know, um, would any of our forwards be willing to move over to wing? 
I mean, I know a lot of our guys are interchangeable. Like, I, I mean, I've honestly seen it, you know? And, yeah. And you don't want to break up the certain lines, like the top line with Duchesne, Granlin, and Forsberg. And then you have, you know, you could put somebody, get somebody to go with Tolvanen and Johansson. Right. Or, or Cousins and Johansson. Get somebody that's going to be able to snipe the puck and, and, and then go while, while the other two play a little more physical game. You know, um, I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm curious to that. The other part I, I haven't really talked about, and, and it is an interesting thought process here, but uh, looking at the East here, um, the Devils are in, still in sell mode. If they're willing to eat some of his contract, I'm not opposed to getting PK back either. Right. I'm not opposed to it. They can have Davies back. And LA's third, because LA's third is going to be worth nothing because they're doing well. So they can have it. They can have Davies in a third. Ha, they can have a Lard in a third. <laughs> um, but Andrew Cope, another one of them. Yeah, uh, like 27, just peaking. Uh, Jake DeBrusque, he hasn't peaked yet, but he's got 3.6 against him, and he's an RFA. Right. Um, I'm pretty sure he charged Boston more money just because Boston was, for lack of a better term, <clears throat> I don't know how to say say it without being like uncensored. So I'm just gonna yeah. say it the way I know how to say it, dicking him around. Be real there for a second, because you know you're going to be on this line, but then you never play on that line. We're going right. to give you a chance here, but they never give you the chance. The GM makes deals, the coach doesn't follow through on them. Whose fault is it? It's yeah. both. Right. The coach for not listening to the GM's deals, and it's the 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 GM's fault for offering something he can't match up to. Um, as far as JT Miller, he would definitely fit the Preds system, but I don't know if the 5.2 cap hit is something I'm looking at. Right. He does have 16 goals on the season and is a good net book presence, but I'm not sure that's what we're looking for at this time. Um, I right. know that putting the puck in the net is one of our top priorities at the current moment. However, um, the other question is, how many teams are going to be moving players just because of the cap. Right. Because that, in its own right, are, is, is uh, a little bit of that. Now, if we're talking a Mark, let's circle back to Mark andre Fleury for a second, right? And say, I'm going to use the interactive here and, and do a trade proposal. Um, one of the other things I could really see happening is Luke Cunning on the move. Yeah. For the Preds. Um, he hasn't really turned out what um, they've done. Sorry, I accidentally clicked out of uh, Cap Friendly here. <laughs> um, there we go. Um, one of the, like, like I was saying, he wasn't turning out to do what they need. Um, as it sits, um, it's going to take some stuff to get, um, some cap open for, for, uh, Pittsburgh. Uh, one of the things I could see happening is Casey DeSmith on the move or Tristan Yari. Um, and potentially Jason Zucker on the move. Yeah. Um, 
just to to try and get that going. Um, now the Penguins do have some dead cap, uh, one point one this year uh, against them for Jack Johnson's buyout. Um, but that's about it there. Um, I know, what is it, this year Nashville gets out from under at least Steven Santini at the 227, so they're going to have 275000 open up in cap space, um, as well as Rocco Grimaldi's $2 million coming off the books because I doubt he resigns either. So they're going to have some opening. Uh, Forsberg right now is getting paid $6 million. I could see that going up to eight till at least 2025, 26. At that point, Johansson, Granlund, and uh, Forsberg are all in their mid-30s. That would be the end of where I would sign it. Uh, Duchesne would be in his um, like mid to maybe a couple of years into his thir- uh, mid-30s. Of 36, 37 years old. So when you're looking at, like, that's one of the things you do have to look at when you're looking at hockey players is age because yeah. they decline and they decline quickly. Um, so that is one of the situations that you look at. Do you want Forsberg at 27 years old to be here till Johansson and Granlund are up and you kind of prove or you keep him here at least till Duchesne's up and you prove what you're doing there at eight million, um, and with the two million of Rocco off your books, um, I think that you'll be able to uh, easily uh, do that, as well as uh, re-sign Trennan and and then Coonan, as well as maybe Nick Cousins. Um, I see Boro and, Be- and Benning re-signing. I do not see Harper, so that's eight hundred thousand off the books. Um, uh, Matias Ekholm does have an increase of uh, 3.5 million next year, so that's um, the Preds are projected at this time, uh, cap wise, realistic cap, um, uh, projected cap space for the off season is 25 million. Um, that is more than enough to get most of your team back. All right. Um, if not by 2026, you're looking at having a full team. Now, the question is, is if Forsberg does not resign and this team slides, you're on the hook for Johansson, Duchesne, and Gremlin's contract till yeah. 2025, 26. And unless you got a trick up your sleeve, and you see something I don't, you know, um, it could really, because looking at the free agent market next year, just taking a quick peruve here, um, if Guinea Malkin, P.K. Subban, Claude Giroux, Phil Kessel, Patrick Laine, Laine's an RFA, okay, uh, Chris Letang, Matthew Kachuk, RFA, Joe Pavelski, UFA, uh, Flurry, Patrice Bergeron, Giordano, Johnny Gaudreau. Johnny Gaudreau is going to be highly sought after. There is a lot of good for, uh, forwards in this. Uh, um, uh, Alexander Radulov, Phil Forsberg, uh, Tomas Hurdle. I mean, Max Dome, Kevin Fiala, Pierre-Luc Dubois, Riley Smith. Ryan Strom, Nems of Kadri. I mean, there's a lot of good hockey players in free agency this year. Yeah. A lot. So I have a feeling me and John are going to be. Google, I'm used to that dot thing back there doing this, not you. Mm. <laughs> Randomly listening to me. Um, but no, as I'm saying, like the free agency market, you also got to look at these teams and go, okay, these guys have free agent markets written all over them. You know, what is a guy like Malkin at this point going to ask? What right. is a guy like, you know, what can you ask for the, like certain players? Because they are get, not getting any younger. Right. And then... 
do you do you do how you put it? Do you do something like like if you do re-sign Forsberg, right? And you get him till say Duchesne leaves, mm -hmm. would you think he'd be willing to take a front heavy contract where there's more money in the beginning and less in the end? Or less now and more money later. Right. You know, are you willing to take less money now so that I like right now, as far as my cap, so that I could go and get you more teammates. Yeah. I can build our system. So that way, not only is are we good, but will we be able to do this? Now the other problem. And I, I do think this falls under that. I'm not a hundred percent sure. Kind of checking now. Um, should have looked on cap friendly while I was there. Um, because we're almost about to wrap up here. Um I I was kind of how you put it, thinking about how the do the does he have one? Does flurry modified no trade clause? Yep, there it is. Ten, ten team list. Ten team no trade list. And the Blackhawks have lost Kevin Lankadin for the remainder of their season. Yeah. As well as Tyler Johnson. And probably Andrew Shaw. Um, you know, yeah. So when when you look at the Blackhawks, um, they really got to decide what they're doing soon, because Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taves in 2023-24, they're out of here. They're right. out of it. Because there's no way you're gonna get them back. Not at 35 years old. Do they still got the go? Yes. Are they worth the 10.5 they're going to ask? No. Kane, maybe. To Buffalo. But that's it. Right. Because he will net them 10 million in jersey sales. Um, and they've got to pay guys like Kirby Doc, Dominic Kubalik, uh, Josiah Slavin, uh, Mackenzie Entwistle. Um, they've got to play Cal to pay De Calvin Dahan. They've got to play pay Caleb Jones. They've got Seth Jones next year, who's going to hit them for nine point five million. Yeah. Next year, their cap, projected cap, is at negative ten already. Million, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'm I'm just looking at it and going, this is not going to work. This is so not going to work. They're in trouble and they don't know how to get out of it. On top of that, how do you get guys like Colin Delia and Cal Morris to stay? Because you've done them so wrong. Right. You know, you've made some bad decisions. And uh, uh, guys like Victor Eintel left because of that. All right. You know, they've got guys who are, are drafted who are not going to come over because they just don't want to. And they right. don't have to. You know? I mean, they've got guys who are 27 years old who are refusing to play over there, play for them. Yeah. Right um, you know, I, I, I'm just looking at their, at, at their roster and going, Chicago's going to be looking at hard times for a little while. Right. Um. I mean, I could I could look around the central. The central Nashville's got three they gotta sign, one by June 1st. 
Um, and that's looking like it to be Adam Willsby. Um, most likely they will sign him um, on the first uh, on the first or before the first. We'll see what happens. Um, they got to sign Spencer Stasny and, and, and Yoko Kondalik by the 15th or their free agents. Um, so um, and me and John have both watched both of them play. Yeah. Um, in the last year, whether it be through college or, or uh, Pride's training camps. Thank God they have those uh, uh, televised so that we can see them. Because right now, looking at the trade, there's not a lot out there. And there's not a lot of wiggle room for a lot of teams. Nashville's probably one of the contenders who have a lot of wiggle room. And it's because right. they have cap space. Does it mean that the Preds will have a first round pick next year? I don't know. I'm not David Point. Nor do I have conversations like that with him. Or have I? Or have I had those conversations or attempted to? That's not my place. My place is to take what the Preds give me and move and turn it into news for you, the fans. That's my job. That's John's job every day. Take what they give us and turn it into yeah. news. Um, and truthful news at that. We pride ourselves on that. Truthful mm -hmm. news at that. That's one of the things that we're really looking at is, is do you... Do you think this trade deadline may be a little more quiet than normal? Yeah, I do. Just because of the frozen cap? Yeah. And then the escrow is a mess. Don't get me started on that with what's going on with the Coyotes. It's just going to prolong it. Right. So, I mean, understand the fans' frustration. These players deserve way more than they're getting paid. And Batman promised by 2022-23, the cap will go up by a million every right. year till the escrow was paid off, and then it would go up by five every year for three years. If the cap does not go up by a million, I see a lot of players going overseas. Right. I see players going home and playing because they're not going to want to put up with this forever. Having money taken out of their paychecks to pay owners back so that they can get their money back when things return to normal, if they even return to normal. Right. And no, this is a no new normal area. Because <laughs> the new normal changes every month. So, um, you know, looking at it, like I said, there's a lot. Calvin DeHaan for Chicago. Uh, if they could get Kane to waive the no trade clause, I could see it happening, but I don't know. I haven't heard anything from it. Uh, Mark Giordano for Seattle. That's a veteran right there. That is a veteran defenseman. And every team contending could use one. Right. Um, John Klingberg, young defenseman with a lot of upside. Jacob Chikrin, young defenseman with a lot of upside. Um, you know, you got uh, Max Dome, young forward with a lot of upside. JT Miller in his prime, two years left, five million. There's some guys where you may look and go, Hey, you might be worth it. You might be. You know, um, we'll, we'll, we'll just see where we are because, you know, don't want to sell the farm too much. Uh, Vitaly Kuritsov, he's 22 years old, played 19 games in the KHL and had 13 points. I mean, when you're the Rangers, uh, I, I don't know. Because when it comes to guys like him, you know, um, uh, with the Rangers, um, what would they want for him? Right. Because their dead cap is sitting at four million.
they're paying Brad Richard an undisclosed amount of money till 2025, 26, according to Cap Friendly. Um, mm -hmm. But you've got guys who are, are, are RFAs or restricted free agents, and I'm not sure I see, you know, how do I put it? I'm not sure I see... Looking, looking. <sighs> Tali Kurisov is not even in the Rangers system at this point from the looks of it. Oops. Wrong one. I mean, because ah, he is on loan to the KHL. He has one year left on his deal. He is an RFA next year and has no interest in coming back to America. Um, with the influx of Russian players doing this because they just don't want to be there for whatever reason in certain cities in America I don't know because like they want to be in Washington they want to be in California they want to be you know Florida they want to be <laughs> I don't know why but that's where they want to be yeah and I, I don't know. I mean, it, it all, I, and it, part of it also all comes down to if a team does trade for this guy, there's got to be a conversation between that team and this guy before the trade even goes through. Right. right. Because otherwise, hey, the, your agent's got to call you and go, hey, um, they're talking about, uh, the Rangers are talking about trading you to, uh, the Minnesota Wild with uh, Kirill Kaprizov. Um, uh, but their, their GM would like to have a conversation with you beforehand to, to see what's kind of going on. Um, you know, it, it, it's one of those situations. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the other, that's, that's really where, I guess, where I see it coming in is, is, is do you have the, is, is there anything like that? And especially since there's going to be so many players in the free agency, um, you know, next year, why don't you dive? And if it don't work out, bail. Right. I mean, because at, even if you bail going into free agency, oh, I, I, I tried with this guy who was a UFA. There was a ton of money there, gave up a first, but man, now that right, caps off my off me, I could go get uh, a, a Nemzum Kadri. I could go get me, a, a, you know, some of these top tank named players because that caps off your books. Yeah. And 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 the, the hard part is going to be some of these teams that are cap straddled are going to be, you know, they're, they're limited. So how are you going to get them to resign? Is there going to be a way to get these guys to resign for less money? I don't see it. Because there's teams out there that are rebuilding that'll pay them the money just to get right. jersey sales. Yeah. Because jersey sales are just as important as we can see because the escrows dropped to the point where they're bringing back the reverse retro jerseys. Every team after this year will have a third jersey. Right. Including the reverse retro. So Nashville's getting a third jersey. More work for us, obviously, but I'm hoping it's good because anything close to that stadium series jersey and I think the fans are just going to go ah! <laughs> mm. I mean it's grown on me as I've seen it in person but it's kind of like one of those you know I, I, I see the trolls on Twitter too that are, are fans of other teams and when the press post they just come under there and flood the comments and I'm just like you people have nothing better to do for your 15 seconds of fame as somebody reads what you post and goes, uh. 
But, you know, I, I, as I see it, I don't see where right now a lot of teams should be willing to take that deep dive, give up first, because this is a deep draft. Yeah. I don't see teams that are like Nashville who say that they could be uh, a cup contender one day and a rebuilder the next. You just don't know with this team. So like um, the same thing with the wild, you don't know, like, do you dive? Do you not? I mean, it's risky. Right. <laughs> I've watched teams do it. A la Ottawa. Um, with the uh, Duchesne trade that did not pay off for them. Um, uh, what is that? Uh, the defenseman from San Jose with Ottawa. That didn't pay off for them either. You know, it's just, it didn't pay off. What were you, what? what? You know, you don't want to be in that situation because at right, that point yeah. you lose your job as GM. Yeah. And Poyle, for better or worse, he's normally been playing it safe on the trade deadline. Yeah. He's never really put us in a position where we're going to struggle. So we'll see. And a lot can change between now and March 20th. Right. Which... <clears throat> We'll see where we're at. Right. But we'll keep you guys up to date. We'll be probably doing a week-to-week -week update on this one uh, ourselves here. Um, and the system will be doing every month because of us doing this until March. So uh, there's going to be one more video. I'm going to let you guys go. I got to get going. John's got a, a, a little yellow uh, icon on his computer that is bugging him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Computer updates and technology updates are fun, but uh, it's 11.30. I uh, told some people I'd be uh, call them at uh, 11, and I have uh, <laughs> went way over that. So see you guys tomorrow. Stay safe. For those of you in Wisconsin that are driving around, be safe. These roads are going to be slick. With the cold coming through and the snow covering the ice. So please yeah. be safe if you're in the Midwest area as this cold snap comes through. Thank you. Peace.